I'm partway through this build, done test fitting my components and kind of playing around the placement of things. So I thought it would be a good point to hit pause and talk measurements and component choices. So let's take a look at some numbers that I think you'll want to know. Welcome to Machines and More. We'll continue our look here at the Sept Meshlicious and start diving into the custom water cooling content. And if you're planning your build, I hope the information in this video can be helpful to you. And I think this is going to be one really fun case to build and no matter what level you're at. So our first number is 53, and that's roughly the clearance you have over your CPU when you shift the case divider from the three slot GPU configuration over to the four slot GPU configuration. Now, obviously you're not going to be running a four slot thick water block, but the reason I would advise doing this is if you want to mount a combo pump res on the GPU side of the house. So to do this, you'll loosen up the screws holding down the case divider, remove the cover next to the motherboard's IO shield, and then just shift the whole divider over. There's quite a few screws, so take your time, make sure everything is unscrewed, and then you should be able to unlatch it. Now with 53 millimeters, you should have more than enough uh, for your typical CPU water block and your typical G-Quarter elbow. I've got the Alpha Cool um, fitting here and also the Optimus AM4 block, and it just about is flush with the front. But you're definitely gonna need either a hardline bend or a 90 degree fitting to get out of this tight area, so just keep that in mind. That also means though that you need to have an SFX or an SFXL power supply only because now you don't have thickness for an ATX unit. And for custom cooling, I would double down on my recommendation to go for the SFX unit because you're going to want every little bit of space here. Now this fan also pretty much has to face out now because there's no way you can turn it in and you don't have the clearance to offset it either. And so you're gonna wanna use the mesh panel over this side for that ventilation. And on the other side, that GPU block is going to be completely covering the fan and well that's not a good configuration so that brings us to the next number and to the other side of the house from the edge of the case to the case divider you have 86 millimeters so now this is no problem for something like the ek flt 120 ddc combo pump res and even if you need to utilize the surface level ports here you still have enough clearance for them with uh, like an elbow fitting. So mounting this particular pump will be a bit tricky due to the way the divider is notched out on the top, but I did fashion up some washers to clamp it down to the tray well enough. And then I'm just going to use a zip tie or two through the actual holes on the divider plate to just secure it down in case anything slips. This particular pump with the mounting solution is 58 millimeters to the surface of the unit before you account for any fittings. So it is a good fit for this case. Uh, the D5 version of this pump res is actually exactly 86 millimeters thick. So if you do go with that one, just realize that it's gonna be right flush with the surface of the case and you will only have those bottom ports usable. Another good candidate for this case would be something like the Corsair XD3 DDC. And because that pump is completely encased and that does come in at also a little bit less than 60 millimeters in thickness. So it's comparable to this guy here. The reason I like this style of pump res for the case, especially the EK FLT style here is because it will be quite easy to ensure that the pump is topped off. The pump does sit lower in this res and if you don't fill it up all the way, you should have no issues still. With a more traditional cylindrical pump res sitting at the top of the case right here, well, it's gonna be really tricky to bleed it out and the fill level will be really critical to getting it to run properly. And you almost have to fill it up 100% of the way for there to be absolutely no sound. A unit like this EK Kinetic will need about 75 millimeters of clearance to run properly. So while you could definitely mount it to this case here through the holes in the back of the case here, I just don't think this style is as optimal. And if you do go with something like this, just try to get it as low as possible. But I think the fill level will still be very critical. This one is the 120 millimeter long tube. And I think that's ideal for the flexibility in this case, but with the right unit, you could probably get a 160 long cylinder in the case if you had to, something like the, you know, the EK 160 SPC is probably something that'll fit within this space here, but you do lose the flexibility for, for the uh, tubing coming out of the top here. So continuing on the case, we arrive at 330 and that's the GPU length that you'll have all the way to the top if you shift the 
support bars all the way down to the bottom. Of course, the true amount of length that you have is going to be contingent on how your pump is positioned and connected if you're using a standalone pump res unit. And that is the absolute max. Now, if you used a combo CPU block and pump like the Barrow unit, then yeah, the, you definitely have all that space here if you need it. If you need to overlap your pump, I think that's going to be quite tricky if the ports on your GPU block are at the end. Um, for my setup here though, I'm using the EK3070FE block and that gets the GPU length down to a paltry 185 millimeters. So it is a good fit. It's such a perfect fit that with a direct connection to the GPU block with an elbow fitting and the support bar shifted all the way down. The top of the pump res is almost flush with the top of the case. It sticks out just enough so that the offset in the mesh top cover can fit it perfectly. Now, if you're going for a pump res and your GPU block does need to overlap, you should be able to make it work. But then my recommendation would be really just go for a block that has the ports on the side here versus the end. And if you did have the over overlap along with needing to use those ports at the end of the block, that's gonna be really tough. Now getting into rad selection, the magic number is 64 millimeters of max thickness for your rad plus fans for a 280 since you would mount that directly to the case panel. Now with a 240, you lose about a millimeter because of the adapter plate that's required there. What that means is that if you really want to go for the thickest possible rad, you could do something like a 45 millimeter thick PE240 rad plus slim fans. Now that being said, I really wouldn't recommend that type of build. I think at thick is something like XSPC's EX240, which is 36 millimeters coupled with 25 millimeter thick fans would give you just a little bit of breathing room and that would be critical to making the build work out nicely. Now the question is thick rad with slim fans versus thinner rad with regular fans, I'd always go for the latter and getting the best quality fan into your build is going to yield more performance. Your choice of 240 or 280 is also gonna depend on your component choice here. I would lean towards a 240 for reasons of cable management and the fact that you can use these very high quality NFA 12 by 25s here. Um, but you know, throw something like Arctic P14s on a 280 and you also have a huge amount of cooling potential there. Now for my build here, I'm going to go with a Hardware Labs GTS 240. I'm only gonna be running a 5800X and the 3070 in this. So with some decent fan speeds, I'm confident this will work just fine. These GTS 240 rads are awesome and just a hair under 30 millimeters thick. So you can get that combination of effective cooling and space efficiency with this rad. And it also does come in a 280. Another similar rad, which is also made by Hardware Labs is the Corsair XR5, which is very similar and also comes in both 240 and 280. It does perform a little bit worse than the GTS 240, but it is a good rad nonetheless. If you're running a 240 though, you have two positions. And even though it looks here like the adapter only has a limited amount of travel, just based on the notches and the screws, you can just take the adapter off and flip the whole set around so that you can position the rad exactly where you want it. So we've covered all the major components um, except for one thing here. And that brings us to the last number, which is one. And that's because the cable management in this case, especially with two being run considerations is going to be one heck of a challenge. I did switch power supplies here to the Corsair SF600 because I have a mesh cable set for it. But in general, getting cables to look nice in this case is really gonna take some serious experimentation. You rather have to going to be very creative in hiding them or get nice cables to show them off. So in my build, instead of hiding that completely, which I think is extremely difficult, I'm just going to embrace it and make them part of the theme. The back of this motherboard does have enough clearance that you can just snake them behind. And also that pump bracket for the FLT unit is perfect for cable management. So I think it will look okay, but just keep in mind, cable management in this case is already tricky. And yeah, I hope this turns out okay with the theme here. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish looping this guy up. I am gonna be cutting up a whole bunch of uh, this guy here. So I'll do that. We'll follow up with the full build, tubing considerations and uh, performance discussion shortly. So go ahead, like, subscribe, links down below. Thanks for watching.